He was like, hey, D-Banks, uh, can you uh, turn that down? So I'm like, yeah, like, bro, call the police on me. She's like, damn, I don't know why the fuck you can do some shit like that. Now the police, bald head man, he pulls up, he bald headed, he black, right? What the fuck I'm doing with my spare time? I could be in the gym balling with some bitches, something that you should be doing, bitch ass nigga. Tell me why that nigga said, oh, I'm calling the police then. Let's get hype. Come on, bro, I gotta get hype, nigga. Come on, nigga, I'm tired as fuck. Nigga, it's time to get hype, baby. Gotta make sure my window closed. I don't need police getting called on me. We Gucci. We Gucci. Let's get to the motherfucking video, man. Hey, baby, come on, baby. Come on, nigga. It's me, nigga. It's me, nigga. Pop this gum in my mouth. Welcome to another motherfucking video, YouTube. You know who it is. T Banks, aka Money T, aka TB, aka Mr. Pockets, always fat, never flat, aka Motion Man. We back with another motherfucking YouTube video, right? I think right now we sitting at like 45,000 subscribers on YouTube, 44,000 on Twitch, 1,000 subs on Twitch almost. And we're going so damn clear, Nikki. 100K coming soon, I need that plaque on my wall. Not this wall, because I hate this apartment, but a wall. And I got some bad news to share with y'all boys. Um, this is my first video after getting, um, getting fired from my job. Yeah. I got fired from my fucking job, man. Uh, if you know, you know, I worked in tech, tech sales specifically. I wasn't doing my job, I ain't gonna lie with y'all. I was taking the content way more serious, my nigga. I get on the call, start to pitch an owner, I be like, Yo, what's up, man? This is such and such. I work with, I put my phone in airplane mode. I just didn't feel it. I didn't feel like doing it no more. I gotta keep it all the way real with y'all. I did not feel like doing that job no more. So I wasn't really doing the job. They was giving me some disciplinary actions, but they didn't really want to fire me because it's like, damn, this nigga's still good at his job. One day I look at my Google Me calendar. I'm like, oh, who is this nigga? They brought me into a meeting with this random big bone black lady I've never seen in my life. And my manager. Straight up telling me like, you know, your, your sales career with us is, is over with, but he started trying to sugarcoat it and shit, talk about some, you know, uh, I, 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 I love working with you. I love learning about DC, where you're from. And, you know, I just loved it. And, you know, I hope you have a great career. Nigga, I can buy that company now, nigga. You know who you're talking to? You know who you're talking to? You know you're talking to the face of a TikTok right now, right? Like the face of the league right now? I, I'm, on, I'm about to get a super max contract. You know who you're talking to, my nigga? What the problem is? But I ain't even gonna flex on y'all like that. I just said, you know what I said? I said, okay, no problem. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing with a stream from Burger King for me. I said, thank y'all so much for the opportunity. I smiled. See y'all later. Simple. Now look what we fucking doing. Them niggas can suck my fucking wee wee. But this story time today is about when my racist roommate called the police on me. This is a true story, by the way. True story. So let's jump into the story time. Y'all know y'all boys got fired. Y'all know we hitting accolades. Always thank y'all. I'm gonna thank y'all again. But I know y'all not here to hear thank yous. I know y'all here to hear the crazy story time. And I have another video coming out of Banger reacting to my old videos. They'll be coming out pretty soon. I'm spamming y'all with the story times, but I'm also gonna do different content. If you fuck with me, you're gonna watch all the videos I release anyway. Don't be no bitch ass. Nigga, let's get a thousand likes on this motherfucking video. I ain't gonna tell your ass again. Let's hop into the story time. Boom. 2019, I'm going to Old Dominion University. I had just graduated. You know, I always gotta set the background. I gotta let y'all know the background information. Just graduated high school, I decided to go to Old Dominion University. Somebody fucking dying. This is LA. Every time I'm making a video streaming, sirens, police, helicopters, man, I could get the fuck out this nasty ass city. It's 2019. Just graduated, going to Old Dominion University, right? So it's 2019. Uh, I have got, I posted, uh, it was this, this uh, Instagram page called ODU Roll Call 2019 or 2023, something like that, whichever year you were graduating. All these colleges do this for the freshmen coming in. You get your picture posted. You're talking about what you're majoring in. Your hobbies, your front lunch, friends, yada, yada, yada. So I post myself on the page and you know what they call me. Motion man. I was getting the DM. Oh my God. It was this one, it was, it was this girl that I thought was bad. She DM me. That's when I was talking about that two year relationship. That wasn't two years to me when I was doing my thing. You know, I ain't gonna get too much into that cause you know, I ain't just not getting into it. I don't know why I told, I told you I had motion. That really has nothing to do with the fucking story. I just want to flex on you little niggas that don't get bitches. Anyways, so boom. The nigga, he DMs me, right? I get I get into the to, to the good housing. I got like the last room available. All the other niggas were standing this shit called like Gresham or something. It was some fucked up ass, some nigga shit. I had the good shit. My shit was called England. 
I only had one roommate. Some niggas had three, four roommates. Fuck. No. But bad bunk beds and shit. No, I ain't, nigga ain't sleeping above me. I got a grenade launcher with a switch. He ain't doing that to me. So when I'm in England, right? So the nigga, he finds my Instagram somehow. I think what happened was I seen his name on the website and I might have DM'd him first or he DM'd me first. I can't really remember. I get a DM from bro. I'm like, he moved in early. I didn't move in the same week. I moved in like a week later. So he sends me a video of what the room looks like. I'm looking around, I'm like, oh, okay. He seems like a cool dude. I knew the motherfucker was a little off because his, his profile picture was a cat and all he had on his profile was just cats. I never, and like one guitar playing video, but you couldn't see the nigga face. So right then and there, I knew this nigga probably was a bitch ass nigga. He sends me the video of what the shit looked like. I'm like, oh, okay, the nigga kind of cool. Boom, boom, boom. Right, so the day I move in, we walk in, my parents are with me, my brother's with me, we walk in. I couldn't figure out how to open the door. The nigga opens the door, boom. The nigga seemed cool as hell. Now this is where shit starts to get a little funky. After I would say, because the first night I moved in, I didn't even I don't even think I slept there. Either I slept there or I left for a long time. I went and got some neck. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I got some neck and some butt. I don't give a fuck. I was doing me. So I went and got some neck, right? For what I'd say about the first week, I barely was in a room. If I was in a room, I was probably on the computer, maybe playing the game. And nine times out of ten, when I wasn't in the room, I was getting some neck. I was gone. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? And he took an issue to that. It comes later into the story. Remember that. I remember our very first run-in when we had an issue. It was, I would say, after a week of being there, I had, uh, I'm very particular about things. I don't like things touched, move. I don't like people fucking up the flow of things I have going on. So I had a toothbrush and I put it above my closet. And somehow, someway, throughout the night, the motherfucker falls off, right? And it's on the ground. So... I, I look and my toothbrush isn't above the closet, it's at the sink. And I'm looking, I'm like, I definitely wouldn't leave my shit right there. I never do that. So I text bro, like, yo, did you touch, move my toothbrush? He like, let me know, like, yeah, it was on the ground, things of nature I put in there the sink. I said, in my head, I'm like, it's a very nice gesture, but I let him know, like, thank you, bro, I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? You did some real shit, let me leave it on the ground, but next time can you just let me know? Only because I don't want people, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be thinking somebody did something to some of my mind or just moving shit randomly and I don't know what's going on because I'll never use it again. So I said, yeah, thanks, bro. I appreciate that. Can you just let me know next time? He was like, yeah, you know, boom, boom, boom. My mom kind of got on my ass. She thought I was trying to cause a problem. I'm like, hold on, baby. Slow down, baby. If I slap this shit out, you too. So we didn't really, so remind you, one thing about white people, bro, about white, those, like white, those little, like white, key, like white guys like that, bro, you can think nothing's wrong in that situation. Y'all talked about, but they'll always have a secret animosity. You're like, hold on, nigga, I thought we was cool. Slow down, man. Relax, baby. I ain't got no problem with you. Why you got a problem with me? They'll have it in the back of their head. So that was our first ever running. And I remember this nigga was weird because one day I remember I'm taking my shirt off. I just got back from the gym. I'm, you know, I'm just changing my shirt. I'm about to get some more necks. And the nigga looked at me. He like, he told me like, I'm telling him like, yeah, bro, you know. He's like, he was like, why are you? He, he asked me like, no, what do you do when you go out? He's just being, you know, you know, nosy. I'm telling him like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I be out with, you know, bitches and shit like that. Like I just be out with the bros sometimes. I didn't really have friends, but I was, I managed with the bitches. I was like, yeah, I'm out with the bitches, things of that nature. And uh, he's looking at my body. He's talking about something. Yeah, you know, I'm just, I was like, yeah, you should do the same thing. You know, go talk to these girls. You know, they, these girls is freshman year of college. Of course, they're going to want to suck some meat. You know, go do your thing. He's looking at me. He's talking about something. Well, you know, I can just tell you're confident. You know, you got a nice body. And I don't know. I just always been scared of girls. Hold on, man. Watch out. This nigga scared. With that with two box A and juice. This nigga scared. I said, oh, whoa. And nigga, you better get, fuck the body, nigga. Go talk to some bitches, nigga. You sound like a bitch yourself, you bitch ass nigga. Anyways, so I'm telling him, like, yeah, brother, just go talk to girls. It's not that hard. He's like, oh, okay, boom. So I'm giving y'all the background how this nigga was. Our second running, which was, it kind of pissed me off. It was in the early morning. My, my alarm, one thing this motherfucker would do, his alarm would go off and he would never turn it off. That pisses me off. Like, how the fuck is your alarm going off in your ear? You aren't waking up off that bullshit. But I remember one morning, I wake up, it's like six, seven o'clock in the morning. I check my phone like this, you know, your eyes get to burn in this shit. I went on Instagram. I think somebody had sent me like a, something on Instagram and the audio was too loud. You know, you're sleepy. You're not really paying attention. Like, let me turn the sound down. It blasts. I'm like, oh shit, it scared me. So I turn it down to get back on my phone. One thing I hate about passive aggressive white people like this, the nigga turns over. He, he knew I turned the, the video down because you couldn't hear it no more. I instantly turned it down. So I'm still on my phone. I'm still sleepy. I'm checking what somebody sent me. He turns over. He's like, hey. You know that, that shit passive aggressive people do? Like, hey. He was like, hey, D Banks, uh, can you uh, turn that down? Seven in the morning. Why the fuck would I leave it up? I don't want to hear this shit full blast. I said, all right, man, watch out. You know what I'm saying? 
second running. Mind you, I'm not remembering this shit, but he does. He has this shit in the back of his head. It's building up to the point where he's trying to build a case that I don't like him when I'm not thinking anything of it, right? So I'm like, yeah, man, I got you. Turn your bitch ass back over and sleep. So everything's building up, and he also had an issue that I was never in the room. That was a real issue for him. He hated that I never really was in the room. I don't know why he hated that shit. He just did not like that I was never in the room. I don't know. But I don't know why you wanted to see me so fucking bad. But boom. <clears throat> so as this shit's building up, it's building up. We didn't really have too many other run-ins or issues like that, like cleaning or you know, using the bathroom for too long or playing the game for too long and being too loud. It was really not no issues like that. Everything was pretty much just those little issues, but I'm telling you, like, it was building up. So let's get into where this shit gets really funky. So I remember one day, right, I was on my gym phase for a minute. Um, I went, uh, we didn't have a kitchen in our room. It was a community kitchen everybody went to. So I'm like, all right, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I got my meal prep shit. I got this, this wild grain rice, this chicken, vegetables. I'm about to go cook my shit in the kitchen. I just got back from class. He did too. We shared the same, the same classes. So as I'm walking out of the, the room, he's right behind me. He told me, yeah, I'm about to go in the kitchen too. I'm like, oh yeah, all right, but I'm like, what you making? He's like, I'm making some homemade pizza. I'm like, all right, bitch, nigga, like, come on, nigga, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, that's, that sounds good as hell. So I'm going to walk in the kitchen. We just chopping up, having a normal conversation. I get on the phone with my ex, one of my exes at the time. I'm talking to her, right? Now, mind you, the kitchen wasn't small, but it wasn't that big. But the area outside of the kitchen was big. So you had to, like, it's basically like this small ass LA apartment. This right here, this right here was how big the kitchen was. But the area outside, there was like two couches, a big ass TV. Like you would have like four, 30, 40 people in there and it would still have space. I put my pot on the stove, right? Now, mind you, he said he was making homemade pizza. So he's going to flip the shit like Papa John's Domino, boom, boom, boom. So I put my pot right there and I take one of the chairs. And I set it in the kitchen because my phone was dying. The only plug was near the stove. So I plugged my phone up because I'm on the phone. But I made sure to know, like, this is in my kitchen. I'm not going to be in the way. I turned my chair to the point where if someone was to walk in and out of the kitchen, they could make any steps and I wouldn't be in the way. Obviously, if they walk right into me, you're being a dickhead because I'm out of the way. Like I said, the kitchen wasn't small. It wasn't big. It wasn't tiny. It wasn't huge. It was just... You know, a normal size walk-in kitchen. So I made sure, like, right, I'm not going to be disrespectful. Nigga want to come in here and cook. You can bring your bitch ass in here and cook, nigga. So I'm out the way. I'm on the phone chopping it up with my girl. I got my pot on the stove. This is what I mean by that passive aggression. It makes me want to slap the shit out of somebody. So as I got my cords right there, he's like, hey, you know, can I get right there? So I move my chair. I'm like, yeah, you good. My nigga, I'm going to move my chair. I'm not really focused on what he's saying. I'm on the phone. I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Do your thing. So the nigga takes some soapy-ass soap. With all the suds and the big ass sponge and starts wiping the counter where my phone like where my charger cord is he's hitting the cord like i think on purpose like let me know like move uh, mind you i'm not i'm seeing it but i'm not registering it as disrespect because i'm focusing on the girl i'm talking to so i'm really slick ignoring it like i'm not even tripping but he's hitting the cords hard as fuck like my shit's bouncing and the soap suds is getting everywhere like it's almost getting in the pot of water i'm boiling for my rice so i'm sitting there i'm ignoring the shit so as I'm on the phone talking to the girl, out of nowhere, he like raises his voice. He's like, he's like, yo, like I, he didn't even say, can I get right there? He actually said, I need to get right there. That's one thing I hate about passive aggressive people like that. He didn't even say, yo, like, can I actually get right? Can, can I have that counter? He said, yo, I, he said, yeah, I need to get that. Like get right there. And I told him, I said, and here's the fucked up thing about people like that. That whole counter was huge. He wanted the specific spot I was sitting at when the spot he was actually standing up was bigger than the spot I was at. The spot that he was at was the counter was bigger than the spot I was at. So he just wanted to get what I had for no reason. So he's like, I need to get right there. Yo, why don't you, his name was like Joel or something. I was like, yo, Joel, why don't you go right there, bro? There's so much more space. Does that look like enough fucking space to cook a fucking pizza? I got my headphones in, my, my, my ex on the phone. I take my headphones in, it's my AirPods out. I'm like, what you, I said, what you, I said, what you trying to do? I said, what's up with you? Answer me, I snap. I don't know what you trying to do. The fuck is you talking about? I said, what you trying to do? Bitch ass nigga. I answer me, snap. He ain't see me like that. Now, here's the funny thing about white people when you confront them like that, right? Instantly, when you snap and go into the, okay, nigga mode, now what you trying to do? This is what white people do. They pull their phones out immediately and they do this little run right here. I'm gonna show y'all. This is what he did. I thought it's a like this. When white people do that little run like this and they get on the phone like this, you already know you're cooked. I knew I was cooked. Once he pulled his phone out and did that little run like this, that little jump like that, 
pulled his phone out, I knew I was cooked. As soon as he pulled the phone out, you know who we called. 911. Because he went, he ran to the door. So I'm like, what the fuck is you talking about, bitch ass nigga? What you trying to do, bitch? I'm talking to him like that. Like, what's up, nigga? Nigga on the phone, he said, he, he, no, he looked at me, he said, did you just threaten me? I said, ain't no threat, nigga, it's a promise. What? What's up? Tell me why that nigga said, oh, I'm calling the police then. Nigga picks up his phone, calls the, not even the campus police, 911. I said, I don't fuck about no police, bitch ass nigga, you's a bitch, nigga. I'm talking to that nigga crazy like that. The girl I'm on the phone with, I hung up, I'm like, hold on, I gotta call you back. I get off the phone, I call my, my, my parents. I'm like, instantly, yo, this nigga calling the police, and I'm gonna beat the shit out of this nigga. This nigga complaining about the counter type shit. I'm slick, I'm going off now, now I'm pissed off. Now you done push me to the point where you piss me off. So I'm like, this bitch ass nigga crying about the counter, and shit, this nigga's a bitch. Now people start hitting the commotion. Mind you, I was cool as hell, I was out the way. I ain't even had no friends on campus. Niggas start seeing me, they're like, oh shit, like, well, what's going on? So niggas coming to the room, there was like only two people that witnessed the, the tail end of it, so they knew I wasn't really in the wrong. The RA ended up coming in, and she knew I was chill as hell. She had no problem with me. She knew I was chill as hell. She actually came in and knew like something was off. She's like, I'm, first of all, this nigga's never in his room, and I never seen this nigga acting like this nigga's chill as hell be doing other things like. She, everybody was instantly on my side, except for the bald head, coon, man, bald head, police man. I'm gonna get into that point. Bald head, black man, coon man. So boom, she instantly like, what's going on? Like, you know, I'm telling her like, this is what happened. They're gonna play by the counter. The RA looking at me like, damn, like, why was he acting like that? And I'm telling my mom on the phone, I'm telling him like, yeah, I'm not, I'm barely even in the room. There's no reason for it. It's even the RA was like, he did tell me that you're barely in the room. He been telling people I was barely in the room. Why is it an issue? Why do you want to see another man that bad that me not being in the room? Yeah, we could be roommates, friends, and maybe I'm not talking that much, but why the fuck does it matter to you? What the fuck I'm doing on my spare time? I could be in the gym balling with some bitches, something that you should be doing, bitch ass nigga, instead of chewing on your fucking guitar strings and playing with your fucking cat hairs and shit, bitch ass nigga. No, anyways. So I'm like, yeah, like, bro, call the police on me. She's like, damn, I don't know why the fuck you can do some shit like that. Now, the police, bald head man, he pulls up, he bald headed, he black, right? I'm on the phone with my mom, she's telling me to calm down because she don't want me to get shot, go to jail or nothing. She's she kind of crying. My dad, you know, one thing about my dad is that nigga gets stressed out in situations. He's like, he's like, calm the fuck down. Let me talk to him. He's like, T, you know what you need to do. If I got to come out there, I'll be out there in 30 minutes. The nigga live three and a half hours away. Unless you got a Bugatti and there's that Dodge Ram, you ain't going to be out here in three hours, in 30 minutes, nigga. Okay. So, 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 so police come in, he, he, I see he outside talking to, to, the, to the white dude. He comes in, he pulls me in, he like, so what's your version of what happened? I tell him what happened, I'm like, yeah, he basically went off out of nowhere, started cursing and going crazy when he had all that space and I was out the way. I even gave him a demonstration of how I had to cherish it. Tell me why, this is when I knew he was a coon bald head man. Tell me why he says, yeah, that actually is exactly the way he described it and it actually sounds like he's in the wrong because he admitted to just cursing at you and going out of nowhere but he still had an issue with me. I don't know, he had an issue with me. So we go back to my, my college room, right? He's like basically like, this, this is how I knew this nigga was a straight bitch. This nigga goes back to the room, right? I go in the room too. They, they made both of us go in the room with the police officer. He's saying that he doesn't feel safe. They moved this nigga into protective custody housing. What the motherfucking fuck? They moved this nigga into protective custody housing. I ain't even know that shit existed. He had to pack his shit the quick shit he can, get the rest the next day, and the nigga left. I said, this nigga's a straight bitch. Anyway, the nigga get his shit. My mom, he, I'm on the phone with my mom. He like, the police officer like, yo, can I speak to your mom? My mom get to, he get to like cut my mom off and being disrespectful. My mom talking about something, I'm just worried about my son's safety with everything going on in the world. He's talking about some man, man, man. You know, um, uh, we don't kill, we don't just shoot people with things of that nature. My mom said, I'm just worried about my son's safety. He's kind of like, man, man, stop. Doing that shit like while she's on the phone. I'm getting irritated at this bald head, black bald head, bitch ass nigga. My dad trying to talk to him too, talking about some, so we, we ain't even trying to do all that. We just making sure our son's safe. We not out there to see know what's going on. We just got a phone call, police there, things of that nature. You know, general parent shit. So the nigga, get on my, he gave me the phone back. The nigga leave and he, he pulled me back into the kitchen again. And my parents told me to record the conversation. So he asked me, was I recording the conversation? I said, no. What my dumbass did was I was recording with the voice, but I showed him the screen to show I wasn't recording, but the screen lit up and he seen the recording and said, uh, no, you are. I said, fuck. This nigga about to fucking take me to jail or tase my ass cheeks or some shit. So I was like, I am, but I can turn it off. He got a little attitude. He was like, fine, so whatever. So he takes me to the kitchen. I reenact him again. He turns his camera on. I show him the reenactment, things of that nature. 
And he's like, well, we're gonna we're gonna see if he wants to press charges, assault charges, or some shit. Assault. I didn't what? I didn't touch this nigga. Like, what are you going to charge me with a threat, my nigga? Oh my domestic terrorist threat or some shit? So I'm like, bro, this nigga, man, I'm like, man, man, this nigga, man, this nigga's a bitch, man. Anyways, <clears throat> so long story short, like, you know, the nigga ended up going to protective custody housing. And we actually used to sit together in some classes. Tell me why the next time I seen this nigga, I was in the back of my normal seat. Man, that nigga was all the way in the front, right corner pocket. Cheese green three. Corner pocket. So damn, my nigga, it's like that, you bitch ass nigga. So all of a sudden, niggas started asking me like, yo, what's happening? Niggas was being nosy. The police always pulled me to the side because niggas was trying to see what we was talking about. But yeah, bro, nigga really called the police over a counter spot when he could have just took the counter that he was on or asked me even more politely. I probably would have moved. I'm not no mean ass nigga. Like, nah, bro, go do so much. He'd ask me nicely. Like, man, I actually get that spot. You know, I want to just cook right there. I'm like, yeah, grab my foot. I don't give a fuck. I probably have been on some chill shit like that because I, I never had no issue with this nigga. After that, most people did not really fuck with that nigga, especially since he called the police on me. Everybody was asking me like, yo, you good? Things of that nature. I'm like, shit, I'm straight. The crazy thing is, right? During this time, I had a white 350Z. A white 350Z. A uh, stick 2006 rev up, if you're a car guy, you know. Um, I had a yeah, manual 2006 350Z, straight piped, test pipes, everything on it. Um, and I was getting a lot of bad attention from police on campus, bro. Like, <clears throat> I would get pulled over, I'm not exaggerating, like two or three times a week for dumb shit. Like, I got reckless, I almost got reckless driving to Virginia, almost went to fucking jail because I missed a court date. I had, I got pulled over for like not letting a pedestrian walk or some shit. It was just dumb shit they were just trying to get me for. So I remember I pulled, I mean, uh, one day it was, it's this light at o, that was at ODU that was really hard to make. Like, the, the first car would barely make it off the line. That's how bad the light was. So, um, it's a left turn. So I'm trying to make, this is, this, this is a full circle moment. So I'm trying to make the left turn and I'm the second car behind. The first car goes as soon as it turns green. As soon as I put it, I mean, I was already in first. As soon as I start to lean forward, it instantly turned yellow. So I'm like, my, my nigga, I'm the second in. My nigga, like, hold on, baby. So I speed up a little bit to make the light. And I made the light, like my back tires had, or maybe even my front tires. Nah, like the middle of the car was already past the line when the light turned red. So I was already in an intersection. I have no no other thing to do but to go. I'm gonna be stuck in the middle of the intersection or in you know in the met way. So I go. I'm going. I'm going. I have five percent sense, so it's hard to see. I'm going. I'm like, damn, what the fuck is that light in the back of my car? I'm looking. I'm like, police lights. I'm like, this is the fucking eighth time this fucking month. I'm like, what now, my nigga? I pull all my my windows down. I put my hazards on. I pull over. Guess who pulled me over? Bald head coon, robot man, police man. Nigga come out talking about some. Uh, you know, back there, you know, uh, you know, that light, you ran the red light. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I didn't, but he talking about some. Yeah, I'm trying to tell him, like, nah, I thought it was yellow. He's like, nah, he was always cutting niggas off. Like, nah, that, that light was red. I seen you speed up. Um, you have your license, registration, things of that nature. I get my license and shit. And I'm like, after, like, we go through the things, he didn't give me no ticket or anything. He was just like, yeah, just next time, don't do that. I asked him, I said, do you recognize me? Like, you remember what happened a couple weeks ago? He was like, you did look familiar. I tried to make us cool. I gave him a fist bump. He walked away. Um, yeah, and that was a full soccer moment. That's when I knew he was really a coon. The nigga pulled me over for a yellow light infraction, bitch ass nigga. But that's basically the story of my roommate calling the fucking police on me. More of the story is don't be around bitch ass niggas. Don't be a bitch ass nigga yourself because there was no need to do that shit, fucking Joe. You was a bitch nigga. If you see this video, if you see me on TikTok, I know your bitch ass probably has. You was a bitch nigga. I don't even know if you graduated, bitch ass nigga. Matter of fact, fuck your mom, fuck your dad, fuck your aunts, fuck your cousin, fuck that nasty ass cat you got, fuck that guitar you don't know how to play on, fuck your yuck mouth teeth, fuck that tight ass shirt you had on, fuck them nasty ass jeans you had on, fuck them fucked up ass Adidas you had on, fuck your family nigga, fuck your bitch ass dad because he was talking about he was gonna come up there, fuck his four F 150. Fuck your fucked up ass haircut. Fuck your fucked up ass mustache. Fuck you, nigga. You's a bitch, nigga. Fuck is you talking about, nigga? My president is black. My Lambo is blue, bitch ass, nigga. Anyways, that's basically the story of my roommate calling the police on me. If you made it this far, you know what I need you to drop underneath. Throw some money signs up. But I think it's about time to wrap this story time up. It's been 30 minutes. Probably gonna edit it down about 20 votes, something like that. If you enjoyed the video, Drop a like. Drop a... Do I even have to say it? Y'all know what the fuck to do. I'm gonna stop saying that shit because y'all do it anyway. A thousand likes on this video. Pay attention for the next video. I got fired, so the schedule changed. About two to three videos a week. Streaming about 
four to five days a week, maybe a little bit more for the holidays. I might do six. We gonna see. If y'all enjoyed this video, y'all know what to do. I'm gonna catch y'all in the next one. Let's go, nigga. All this money coming in.